Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, get out your King James Bibles and turn to Proverbs chapter 7. We might go into 8 a little bit. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of Bible by the, the pond. And today we're going to be talking about the difference between uh, the seriousness of the falling away today when it comes to God's wisdom versus the world's wisdom. And uh, just I'm going to jump into it a little bit, then I'm going to throw some information uh, about some a prayer request update. But the fear of the Lord is the first thing that gets taken from mankind. The fear of the Lord. When it comes to the falling away, how does man fall away from God and get unright with God? Okay, is the fear of the Lord gets taken. The fear of the Lord gets taken, okay? And if you read the Bible in the Proverbs, it talks about the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and all they that keep his commandments. There's verses that have both of them together in the same verse saying that by the by default, if you keep His commandments, it's because you fear God. If you're not keeping His commandments, you're not, you don't fear God. In Ecclesiastes it says, uh, fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Okay. And that's what pleases God, and you get uh, the Old Testament where it talks about Enoch. Okay. Before he was caught up, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Okay, and all power and honor and glory be unto our God, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Okay, for Thy pleasure they are and were created. We were created to please God. What pleases God? Fearing Him by keeping His commandments. They go hand in hand. Some people will say, I fear God, but they're not keeping His commandments. Those are just words, brother, says Christ. Those are just words. They don't mean anything if they're not backed up by works, by your deeds. By your actions. Words are just words if they're not backed up by action and deeds. Okay, so there's a lot of people out there that'll claim they fear God, but they don't. And they stop keeping His commandments. And what comes next? It's not the Word of God that matters, it's just the message. And we'll let world's wisdom determine what the message is, not God's wisdom. Not the Holy Spirit opening the Word of God, and it's the words of God that matter. No, no, no. It's the world's wisdom. Okay? Uh, the Bible talks about uh, in the world that the Antichrist spirit is even in the world today. That spirit of Antichrist is there. And the spirit of Antichrist gets, doesn't want people fearing the one true God and doesn't want people keeping his commandments, keeping his word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I can go on and on and on like I normally do. But he doesn't want you following the word of God. He wants you following the words of men. He wants you following the wisdom of this world. So we're going to get into this and we're going to talk about the Bible likens God's wisdom to a virtuous woman. And he likens the wisdom of this world to a harlot. And that's what I wanted to read for the brethren. So you can get the contrast to motivate, to exhort the brethren to get back to reading your Bible. Get back to knowing the Bible. People, the Bible says, through good words and fair speeches, deceiving the hearts of the simple. What are the simple? People who don't know the Word of God. They're too busy being respecter of persons. I'm of that person. Whatever he says, I want to go with it. Why? Because you won't take time to read the Bible for yourself. Brothers is Christ, make sure you're starting your day with the Word of God and you're ending your day with the Word of God. Okay? Go through it. Take Alexander Scorvey or somebody reading the King James Bible audio and listen to it as you work. Make it a thing where you spend a lot of your day in the Word of God when you're doing physical work. When you take time to sit out here and read the Word of God and talk to the Word of God, get into prayer. And talk with the Lord and say, Lord, what does this mean? What does that mean? There's times where I was like, Lord, I came across something. I don't get this. And a week down the road, God points me to a brother in Christ who did a Bible study video on YouTube. And I'm like, it explained it. And I went back to reading it again and studying it again. And like, okay, that does fit. And God answers my prayers. He'll answer your prayers. As long as you don't hold iniquity in your heart. What is it? Because uh, I just got through that in Psalms again. Uh, Psalms 67, no, Psalm 66, verse 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Okay. As long as you don't hold iniquity in your heart, God will answer your prayers. If you're seeking truth, God will show it to you. Okay, real quick, before I forget, update. 
Uh, I got the Bibles here. I'm going to be shipping the Bibles back out overseas because I have to wait for them to come to me. And then I turn around and reship them out. So I got the Bibles to me. I'm going to be reshipping them out overseas. So once again, Brother Sister Christ, keep praying that the Bibles make it to their destination safe, undamaged, and that they get put in hands of people that will actually read them and use them. Okay? And hide them in their heart. So Proverbs chapter 7 is what we're going to be in this morning. Why is this a big deal? Because, brothers says Christ, the falling away is getting worse and worse and worse. Every dispensation ends in apostasy. The apost today, I'm, I haven't done a study on it, but there are brethren out there that have done studies that the apostasy is how wicked the world's getting. Uh, that's not the apostasy, okay? The apostasy is with God's people. Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women that got saved the Bible way, that started having a changed life, new creature in Christ Jesus, the new birth, and they decided, you know what, this, I'm going to go back to doctrines of devils. The Bible talks about um, that some shall depart from the faith. In other words, they're in the faith, they're saved, they shall depart from the faith and give, and he, give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having their conscience seared with the hot iron. Okay, the apostasy today that's leading into the time of Jacob's trouble is the falling away. The brethren are falling away from absolute truth. The body of Christ is getting really messed up in these last days. Things aren't getting done God's way. The wisdom of God isn't wasn't being elevated. The word of God isn't being elevated. The words of man are being elevated. The I want, I got a tree out there, the I want tree is being elevated. I want this, so I'm going to wrestle the scriptures to my own destructions because I want this, I want things to be this way, I want to be do this, and it goes on. And this is no longer the final authority. The wisdom of this world is the final authority. Man is the final authority. Brother says Christ, God said the following way is going to happen, so what am I doing? I'm trying to slow it down as much as possible, and I'm trying to raise as many brothers and sisters in Christ out of the falling away as I possibly can. Because when Jesus comes back to call us home, are you ready? A lot of the brethren aren't. They act like they are, but their life doesn't line up with this book. Their life is starting to line up more with the world. They're starting to look more like the world, act like the world, talk like the world. Forgive the noise. I got the hummingbird fears up there. And lately we've been getting tons of hummingbirds. So I showed that video where there's tons of hummingbirds and everything. So let's get into this. Chapter 7. I want to get to the Bible and reading the Bible. Okay. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live and my law as the apple of thine eye. Now I did an old study, Brother Says Christ, talking uh, a, a while back, probably a year or two back. And it talked about are we under the law or laws? Plural. Because easy believism, they take repentance out, knock it clean out, they knock sometimes they knock prayer out. No confessing both your repentance and your belief to God in prayer, no asking God to save you. They just kick it all out. And one of their biggest things is we're no longer under the laws of God. Now, the law of sin and death, we're no longer under the law of sin and death. That is true. But if you read Romans chapter I think it's chapter eight. It says we're no longer under the law of sin and death, but we're under the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We're under the law of God. Okay. We're still under a law. There, there is no, I'm, I'm, I'm free from any law, period. In other words, you know what, what it means to say we're under the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus? God has given all judgment over to his son, Jesus Christ. We were bought with a price. We're not our own. God is still in charge through His Son, and He commands, we obey. And the first number one commandment for today is obey the gospel. You need to get saved. You need to get born again. And you need to get saved God's way. Okay? Not man's way, because man's way will always lead you to hell. All these false gospels. Paul talked about, if any man preach another gospel that we have not preached, or another Jesus that we haven't preached, or get you to receive another spirit, that Antichrist spirit, that Jezebel spirit, which I think they're one and the same. They go hand in hand. Um, you're supposed to receive the Holy Spirit, not an Antichrist spirit. Okay. 
But brothers says Christ right here, keep my commandments and live and my law as the apple of thine eye. Today, how do we live? By keeping the commandment to obey the gospel. Get saved. People try to make out like it's a suggestion. It's not a suggestion. If you don't want to go to hell and then the lake of fire to burn for all eternity, you need to get saved today. Repentance, godly sorrow, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. Oh, I love my sin. I have no problem with my sin. All I, ca I have a problem with the I have the problem with the consequences of sin, but I really don't have a problem with the sin itself. That's the average person today. The average professing Christian today doesn't really have a problem with sin itself. They have a problem with the consequences. And they're trying to find any back way, back door that they possibly can to try to get into heaven without coming to God in a broken and contrite spirit. The Bible says God, God saveth such that have a broken and contrite spirit. They won't come to Him broken. They come to Him loving their sin, not having a problem with their sin, but they're getting into the easy believism, faith alone. I'll just believe in the big guy upstairs, and I'm good. Uh, no, no, no. Notice what this says here. It says, bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the tables of thine heart. Once again, brother, says Christ, it comes back to a heart issue. It's a heart issue. It's not a head issue. It's not a uh, he said, she said issue. It's a heart issue. God looks at the heart. What's in the heart of man? Okay, when you go, when you believe, it's just head belief. That's a whole other study. We talked about about feigned, un, faith unfeigned. How is faith faked? It's just head belief. You have the knowledge. You don't actually believe. Because if you believed in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, you would have repented before you believed. You would have come to God broken, having sorrow in your heart for your personal sins that you've sinned against Him. Regretting ever sinning against God, fearing God. But that's not there. Then you didn't believe. You don't have faith. It's head knowledge. You're part of a club. Don't mean to go into it too much, but brothers says Christ, we're under the law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus. We God has taken the old man gets thrown at the foot of the cross and is crucified with Christ and dead and buried, and the new man is raised with Christ. The new man is under the authority of Jesus Christ under the authority of God. I'm not my bo I'm not the boss. God is the boss. Okay? It's not my way, it's God's way. Okay. Let's keep going. Bind them upon the fingers, write them upon the tables of thy heart. Verse 4. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. And call understanding thy kinswoman, wisdom and understanding. With true wisdom comes true understanding. And only God can give it. Uh, Solomon, he asked God for wisdom. If any of you, the Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. It's in the book of James. Okay. I think it's James. Forgive me if I'm wrong. But you ask God for wisdom. You want real wisdom, good wisdom, true wisdom? You go to God for it. You want a counterfeit? You want a fake? You want a uh, perversion of it? Uh, you just act, just be your own wisdom or seek the world's wisdom. But here it says, Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call unto understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman. What's a strange woman? The wisdom of this world. The world's way. What's the world's way? It's always leading people to hell and the lake of fire. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. <laughs> this over here, flattereth with her words, the world's way. They always seem to fight and argue. There's two hummingbird feeders up there, and there's five spots for each of them, so there's ten spots up there, and there'll be like five of them fighting over those spots like it's the end of the world. Not new. So I pray that's not drowning out my talking or bothering people. We'll find out. We'll find out. Verse 6. For at the window of my house I look through my casement. At the window of my house I look through my casement. This house, I look through my casement. When you look, when I'm looking at the world and seeing where the world's going, I'm looking at the brethren 
professing brethren. There's a lot of professing brethren for professing Christians. They're as lost as, as a paper plate in a snowstorm, as they say. They're as lost as a paper plate in a snowstorm. And then there's brethren I look at that I say, hey, they did at one time line up with this book. They did get saved, the true plan of salvation, and they're falling away to the world. But I'm looking and I'm watching. We're supposed to be sober. We're supposed to be vigilant. Why? Because our adversary, the devil, going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We're supposed to watch. Uh, you get through the whole armor of God. At the end, it talks about what people like to leave out when it comes to the whole armor of God. What makes the whole armor of God work is you're supposed to watch there, too. We watch through the Word of God. God tells us what's going to happen. We watch. And we pray. And we're watching by being sober and keeping our eye out for the enemy. And we watch by looking for that blessed hope. When Jesus comes home, are we ready for it? Are you ready for it? But anyway, for at, at the window of my house, I looked through the casement and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youth, youth a young man void of understanding. Void of understanding. Today, it's not just young men. Today, it's those young men who are void of understanding grow up to be old men that are void of understanding. Verse 8, passing through the street near her corner, her corner, what's the her? The strange, from the stranger which flatteth with her words, the strange woman, passing through the streets near her corner, the wisdom of this world. And he went the way to her house, starts at the corner, goes to the house. Brothers this is Christ, it only takes one step, it takes one step in the wrong direction. Oh, it was just one step. Then you take another step. Then another step. Then another. Next thing you know, you're so far from where you started, God's wisdom, you're, you're looking like the world, acting like the world, talking like the world, you're making stands for the, what the world is. Uh, in the so-called Bible-believing body of Christ, do you realize, we're going to get into this in the next study, do you realize that a lot of the words, titles, names, words, descriptions, uh, they have no basis in Scripture. How they get into the body of Christ? But I'm talking about Bible believers. Add thou not to God's word, lest He reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. How did they get into us? Because we start turning from what God said and start elevating what man said. Man's way is better than God's way. It just takes one step in the wrong direction. That's why the Paul says so many times, by all means, with love. And in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, try to correct brethren, reprove brethren, try to get them back on the right path. But if they flat out reject, I'm not going to do things God's way. I'm not going to say things God's way. I'm going to continue doing my own thing. Then you have no part in them other than prayer. You pray for them. I always say this. You leave a door open so if they get their heart right with the Lord and get back to saying things God's way, standing for God's word, doing things God's way, they get back to being right in God's eyes, and right standing, right heart, then they can come back into your fellowship. Okay. A lot of people today will kick someone to the curb and just utterly, and, and treat them like they're utterly destroyed and kick them to the curb. How does that exhort anybody? You kick them to the curb and tell them, get your heart right with the Lord and you can come back. But it just takes one step in the wrong direction. Notice it started out in the corner. Passing through the streets near her corner. They're on the street corners. Brothers is Christ, there's times where there's places where you just shouldn't go. I'm talking about physically. There's places you shouldn't go. Okay. Well, I'm just driving through. Or a lot of people try to use the excuse, well, I'm just witnessing for Jesus. I'm going to go there to witness for Jesus Christ, to do some gospel tracting. I'm sorry, Brother Christ, there's just some places that are so wicked nowadays. It used to be, in the past, they used to be hidden places. The bars, notice the bars in the past, they had no windows, and it was just a bar, and you wouldn't go to those places. Now, all the restaurants are bars, almost, and they've got windows. Basically, sin used to be done behind closed doors. All this wickedness and sin, uh, if you go back 60 years ago, it was done behind closed doors. If you look today, it's right out there in the open. Women dress like men. I hardly see any woman dressed like a woman these days. They're all dressed like men, or they're, they're dressed like men and immodestly. Okay. 
And the men, no difference. Okay, they're starting to look like women, long hair. Uh, the wickedness, I mean, there's some men that used to be, when they were in their own little group, they'd, they'd have the dirty jokes and the cussing and, and whatnot, and they'd smoke, they used to smoke in corner, around the back, in hidden places. And now, like I said, everything's just done right out in the open. The cussing, the dirty jokes, the cursing God, they'd curse God privately. And then in front of other people, they'd keep their mouth shut. But now they just curse God right out in front of everybody. I mean, everything's done right out in the open. Brothers and Christ, there's some places you shouldn't go. You just shouldn't go. Don't get tempted. You're not supposed to go out of your way to be tempted. Okay, we're going to be tempted enough as it is. We all have our temptations. We all have our struggles with the flesh. We all had our addictions that we gave, sinful, wicked addictions, and worldliness and idolatry that we gave up for the Lord. Okay. I, I say that a little bit of emphasis because I know brethren that they're still holding on to some their addictions. They're still holding on to idolatry. They're still holding on to worldliness. They're still starting to do things the world's way. They're falling away. They're doing things the world's way. And they won't let go of it. But there's a lot of us that have, and they did. The ones I call a brother in Christ, sister in Christ, their testimony, the changed life, I saw it. It's there. They did have that changed life, but they're slowly going back to the world. Why? Because they are going to the wrong places. They took one step in the wrong direction. Then they took another step. Then they took another step. Next thing you know, like I said, they're so far from where they started. They're not the, they don't look like the same person. They don't act like the same person. Truck's going by. They don't act like the same person? No. I know some brethren in ministry that right now their ministry is just a, a complete and utter mess. And people come to them present tense and say, this man's lost. And I said, well, I can see how you can get that. But did you follow the ministry from the very beginning? Oh, no, some brethren don't do that. My ministry, or God's ministry, Paul's ministry that I'm blessed to be part of, have you gone back and watched all my videos from the beginning to now? Or did you just come across this video and watch these vid the latest videos and that's it? No, when you come across a uh, YouTube ministry, you need to go back to the beginning and follow it along, all the way up to the present. Okay, I had to explain to them, says, there's some brethren out there that when they got into ministry, I believe they were saved, they were called of God, they did amazing work for the Lord, and they're now part of the falling away. They're not lost, they're just part of the falling away. You've got to treat them like they're lost, you've got to put them out of your fellowship. You probably have to preach the gospel to them again, time and time again, to remind them who it is that saved them why they got saved, why they needed to get saved, who it is that saved them, and who it is they serve, because they've forgotten who they serve, because they're starting to serve the me, myself, and I. The self-trinity. The me, myself, and I. Right? That's who they're serving. They're serving the world. They're trying to be man-pleasers. I can go on and on and on. But it starts with one step in the wrong direction, Brother Sis Christ. Right here, it starts at the corner. No, oh, I'll just walk over and, and first I'll just look at the corner. Oh, then I'll walk over and have and strike up a little bit of a conversation with her. It wouldn't hurt to just talk with her. The world's wisdom. It wouldn't hurt to just talk with her. Next thing was to do. And he went the way to her house. Now we're going to her home. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. Like I said, there was a time when things were done at night. The sin and wickedness of the world. It was done in secret. It was done behind closed doors. Now it just seems we're in the last days, brothers and Christ. God can call us home any day now. Everything's just right out in the open. Everything's just right out in the open. They don't hide. They what the Bible talks about how they glory in their shame. There used to be a shame there with that sin, which is why it was done in secret. Why it was done behind closed doors. Why it was done at night. But now they glory in their shame. It's done in the daytime. It's done out in the open. In the twilight and the evening and the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. Okay, now stop right here. Remember it said it started at the corner. So this saying, behold, they met a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. That should be a sign, a tire of a harlot. See, today we do a lot of compromising in these battles. Not me or you specifically, brothers and Christ, but the body of Christ is being pushed to make compromise after compromise in these battle buildings. People aren't dressing right. People aren't talking right. People aren't acting right. 
people aren't living right, their priorities are all messed up, but we're just supposed to compromise and all come together and, sing, and hold hands and sing kumbaya. A tire of a harlot. Something's not right. He, this man knows something's not right. He doesn't have understanding, which is why he's going to get sucked in. But that could, you know something's not right. But what do you do? You go ahead and you take another step in the wrong direction. And subtle of heart. The Bible says, by good words and fair speeches, deceiving the hearts of the simple. What do we say up here about the heart? Bind them upon thy finger, write them upon the table of thine heart. Talking about God's wisdom, God's words, hide them in your heart. If God's word is hidden in your heart, it's next to impossible for them to deceive you. You have to have, to have the Holy Spirit, you have to be born again. You have to have the Holy Spirit opening the scriptures to you, hiding God's word in your heart, and living them. And when someone comes around and says, oh, you know, we can do this, or we can do that, or this way is better, or that way is better, or, or this is, we're going to say Trinity instead of Godhead, and this and that, you're like, uh, no, I'm sticking with the Bible. I'm sticking with what the Bible says. You're false. Get away from me. Through good words and fair speeches, deceiving the hearts of the simple, the heart of the simple. And I've always taught this, brothers and sisters, right? What is that? Those are people that aren't hiding God's word in their heart. They're hiding the world's words in their heart, man's words in their heart, man's wisdoms, man's way, the way man likes to say it, okay? Instead of angels that left their first estate, we're going to call them fallen angels. Another study I want to do eventually, are there fallen angels in the Bible? Chapter and verse where the angels are called fallen angels. Uh, Nephilim, the children that depart, Nephilim, Nephilim isn't in the Bible, okay? We... We keep going off of man's wisdom, man's words. But you have this harlot that comes out and she's subtle of heart. You know what they like to do more than anything? You remember what Satan did to Jesus when Jesus went out into the wilderness? He would quote half scripture, half world. So he'd use half of God's wisdom and mix in half of the world's wisdom with it. And once you mix in half the world's wisdom, it's no longer God's wisdom at all. But he tried to deceive by throwing a little bit of God's words in there. That's what they'll do, brothers and sisters Christ, and you've got to watch out. They'll say, they'll quote scripture, they'll, they'll quote the Godhead, the scripture where it says Godhead, and then they'll turn around and say, you see, the Trinity is, you see the subtlety? Uh, the Bible talks about the kingdom of heaven, you know, the day of the Lord, the kingdom of heaven. Now, brothers and sisters Christ, the millennial kingdom that's, that's being talked about here, you see the subtlety? Where does it say Millennial Kingdom in the Bible? It doesn't. It doesn't. You see the subtlety here? They're subtle of heart. They'll, there's, there's people that will flat out read the Bible as it is, but then when they go to explain it, they use the world's wisdom to explain it. They use the world's terminologies. They use the world's words. And you sit there going, Woo, he's a great man of God. He used the King James Bible. Doesn't mean he's a great man of God just because he uses the King James Bible. When he starts adding to it, subtracting from it, correcting it, he's a servant of Satan. But they use subtlety, brothers and Christ. If you don't know your Bible, you can be deceived. It's that simple. And that's the whole point of world's wisdom. It's not the words of God that matter, it's just the message. And you need to come to us for the message, the world for the message. You can't go to God by the Holy Spirit reading this book and get what God wants you, the God's wisdom. Oh, no, 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 no. you got to go to the world to get the message. Hence, all the Bible perversions, all the doctrines of devils, the false gospels, the false Jesus Christ, the false Christ posing as Jesus, that Antichrist spirit. You have all these Antichrists posing as, as Jesus Christ, but they're all fakes and frauds. They're counterfeits. How is that? Because, brethren, we, as Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women, we have the perfect written word of God, and we're not giving it up. But there are brethren that are giving it up, and they're becoming part of the falling away. They start ignoring the word. They start adding to the word. They start subtracting from the word. They start adding their own definitions. Instead of going off the Bible definition, they add their own definitions. Instead of using the Bible to define the Bible, the Bible to, to, to explain things, they use man's wisdom to explain things. 
world's wisdom. Once again, subtle of heart. How do we get away from that, brothers and sisters Christ? You need to be reading 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now before anybody gets upset when I say this, doctrinally it's addressed to a man in ministry. It's definitely important for a man in ministry. If he's not following this book and studying this book and, and speaking this book and saying things God's way, doing things God's way, he, he shouldn't be preaching and teaching. Okay, There's times where men have to step down for a while, get their hearts right with God, and then they can come back to preaching and teaching. Okay, There's some men that shouldn't be preaching and teaching at all until they get their heart right with God. I almost want to say at all, but until they get their heart right with God and get back to this being the foundation. Okay, Brother says Christ, but that, that, that verse, instruction righteous is for everyone. You need to know this book. The Bible says in Timothy, um, all scriptures given by inspiration is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God, like I said, once again, doctrinally, it's talking about men in, in, in ministry. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. But instruction and righteousness, it's for all of us. We can learn from that. These men of God are, are, that get into ministry, they're supposed to be setting the example that everyone else is supposed to follow. That's what Paul said. Follow us as you have us for an example, he said. Be ye followers of me as I am of Christ. These men of God that are in ministry are supposed to be setting the example that everyone else is supposed to follow. So if they're studying the Word of God to learn it and hide it in their hearts and live it, you, everyone's supposed to be studying the Word of God, hiding it in their hearts and living it. You see? But once again, through good words and fair speeches, deceiving the hearts of the simple. There are so many false converts out there and they're being deceived left and right because A, they don't have God's perfect written word. One of the biggest pushes in these false religions that claim Christianity is they don't want them having the King James Bible. They're 100% against the King James Bible. They don't want them knowing the truth. And then when it comes to supposedly Bible-believing churches, these Bible buildings, uh, the Bible-believing movement, there's people claiming to be Bible believers, they're starting to stray from this book too. Satan's getting this book out of their hands. Or getting this book to gather dust in the corner. They're not reading the book. They're not staying in the book. You got to. I, I know I'm going off on this for a good while, but it's just Christ. But brethren, you're like, well, I know, let's say, eternal security. I know I'm sealed into the day of redemption. You still need to read about it all the time, brothers and Christ. You still need to stay in the Bible studies that talk about it. You need to keep refreshing your heart on all the doctrines all the time. All the instruction righteous. You need to keep reading this book over and over and over, refreshing your heart. Why? Because the moment you put this book down, that's a step in the wrong direction. That's a step towards this harlot. That's a step towards the world. Don't put the book down. Stay in the book, brothers and sisters of Christ. So many brethren are getting, like I said, the falling away today. What's causing it? The fear of God gets taken away because some of these brethren that I talk to, brothers and sisters of Christ, I'm like, where's the fear of God? You're going against the scripture. You're doing things the flesh's way, the world's way, Satan's way, the three enemies. Where's the fear of God? How are you treating brethren? Where's the fear of God? How are you treating the lost world? Where's the fear of God? Where's the fear of God? And then the next step is... But the evidence that you don't have fear of God is what we just said. You're not doing things the word, the God's way. The Word. The Bible. Mm -hmm. You're not keeping His commandments. You're not doing things God's way. You're not hiding God's Word in your heart anymore. What happened? You stopped fearing God. Well, let's get going here. So this son of heart, this man has no understanding. So he doesn't fear God. He's not hiding God's Word in his heart. His wisdom. His commands. He's just going out there... Nonchalant. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Oh, I'm just going out here having just I wonder where I can have a good time. Where can I have some fun? Fun is flesh, flesh is fun. Verse eleven. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. She's loud and stubborn. The world, Brother Sis Christ, the world is coming at us uh, coming at everyone hardcore. Indoctrination, brainwashing. Through Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games, 
anime, cartoons, the music industry, the satanic style music industry, through politics and commercials. They're loud. When you let them in, they're just yelling at you and they're just, just overpowering you, overpowering you. She is loud and stubborn. Repent. Repent or perish. Repent and believe. Hell is real. They're stubborn. They won't listen. The world's wisdom won't listen. You cannot correct the world's wisdom. You can only preach God's wisdom and those who want it will come out of the world. And those who want, don't want it, you don't conform to the world. You don't start trying to make yourself sound like the world to win the world, to gain the world. You stick to the Word of God, you stick to God's way, and if they don't want the truth and they're going to be stubborn, let them go. Don't get messed up in the world. It's starting to look like the world. But the world's wisdom is loud, it's stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Do you ever realize that when I got saved, this is my testimony, it might line up with a lot of you, when I was lost, the world really wasn't hounding me too much. It didn't seem like the world was against me because I was going with the flow, in other words. But after God saved me and said, okay, you're now in Christ Jesus and made into us wisdom, I have the fear of God, I have the Holy Spirit in me, and God's opening the scriptures to me, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption, all these things. He's giving me a new life. He's cleaning up my life. I'm now going against the flow. I no longer look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world. The moment I got to being like that, it seemed like the world was now all on me, trying to get me back to being like the world. When a man gets into ministry, why is it that all these lost people, these false converts and lost people will come and attack you over and over and just, they go out of their way to, to leave their house and come after you. They say their part, and you're done. That's what. That's how we are, brothers. That's how we're supposed to be. We say our part, and we're done. Here's the truth. Not our part, but we say the truth. Here's what God says. Take it or leave it. Well, I don't want it. Then I'm done. But the lost world doesn't do that. They just keep coming back and coming back and coming back. They leave their house. Her feet abide not in her house. You want to live that way? Then go over there. Oh, no, no, i got to get in your face, i got to get in your business, because I want you to be like me, the lost world, the world's wisdom. They want everyone to be like them. Have you experienced that? I have. I have. She is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without... Now she's without... She's going out seeking... Remember, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, going around seeking uh, as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's going around seeking. He's trying to find people that he can put as many roadblocks in front of them to try to prevent them from getting saved, which he can't. But when someone does get saved, he tries to mess that person, that brother in Christ, that sister in Christ. He tries to mess up the body of Christ as much as he can. And he goes out to do that. Okay. Now is she without... Now in the streets, and lieth in wait at her corner. She's looking to, to ensnare somebody. That simpleton, that person that doesn't know God's wisdom, that doesn't know God, doesn't fear God, that's what they're looking for. So she caught him. Okay, He's where he shouldn't be to begin with, out in the corner where all the harlots are. And she caught him, and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. Peace offerings? Peace offerings? There goes the, the whole thing about this whole false Christianity out there and all these Babel buildings about conformity. And um, the word I'm looking for is compromise. Compromise. Thank you, Lord. Compromise. I have a peace offering with me. You got to compromise a little bit. You give a little bit, I'll give a little bit. Come on, it's peace offerings. This day have I paid my vows. Liar. But it sounds good. Sounds good. Peace offerings. I've paid my vows. 
So far came I forth to meet thee. I, I'm, I've been here waiting for you. It's always been you. No, they're setting out there for anybody to snare. Anybody to snare. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and have found thee. Good words and fair speeches. Doesn't that sound good? That almost sounds like a, a love novel as we keep getting through this. It's almost like you, you, all those laws, when I was lost, I never read them, but you always hear people talk about them, make fun of them. All the cheesy romance novels and everything. Oh, it sounds good. That's a harlot. And that's all those are. people are in those books, mostly harlots. They're not doing things God's way. They don't know what real love is. Verse 16, I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry. What's dead? Be the bed here. The world. The world makes itself look great on the outside. Remember what the Bible talks about? Those men, those, these religious men, they're whited sepulchers on the outside, but inwardly they're full of dead man's bones. Now, I'm not trying to change that. It's talking about men trying to look religious and look holy and, you know, like we talked about how you can feign being a just man. You can feign it. You can fake it. But the world always tries to doll itself up to make it look greater than it really is. It always does. And when you get sucked into the world, what do a lot of people do when they get sucked into the world? They end up miserable, broken, drunkards, drug addicts, addicted to the, the flesh is just in charge. Carnally minded, that's the mark of someone who's lost. Carnally minded, walking after the flesh. Someone who's saved is spiritually minded, walking after the spirit, and they struggle with the flesh. They're still under the law of sin. There's times they still sin, but they struggle with the flesh, and their heart is still for the Lord. That's you and me, hopefully, brothers Christ. That's you and me. But the lost world, where they try to tell you you can be saved and be carnally minded and walking after the flesh, the world just becomes flesh, but the world really likes to doll itself up. They use music. I know Brother Christ once did a great study on music and how you can use music uh, to make something look ten times better. You can show a video of something, no music, and you're like, eh. Then they add the right music to it and your flesh gets all riled up and goes, oh, and you get really into it. They use colors. Okay. They use things that entice the flesh. I guess another good way to think about it, Brother Sis Christ, is back in the day, the commercials for the fast food companies, commercials, the sandwich, all the different fixings falling down together. And it's all, it looks nice, big, uh, clean, and crisp. And then you go and you actually get the sandwich and it looks nothing like the commercial. So they put on this big show, it looks great and wonderful. And then when you go to get the actual product, it's not like they, they advertised it. So they put on this great show. You know, I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestries, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. Let that one sink in. What's Egypt? It's a type of the world. Are you going to get in bed with the world? There are brethren that are falling away and they're getting in bed with the world. They're doing things the world's way. The world's wisdom. They're not doing things God's way. Okay. I got into it with a brother that I love and I miss that he said before he got married he believed in the order of authority that God gave in the Bible. God, man, woman, child. Jesus Christ is the head of the man. Jesus is God. So that's God, man, woman, child, animals. That's the order of authority. And today it's all messed up. Animals have more authority than all of mankind. You go backwards. Children have more authority than the parents. Women are in authority over the men. Okay, and the man is not listening to Jesus Christ anymore. Jesus isn't the head of the man. All right, everything's messed up. But this brother in Christ, he believed the truth. He stood for the truth. Then he got married to a woman who doesn't believe that, and that woman is messing him up. What is it? He's getting in bed with the world. He cares more about pleasing his wife than pleasing God. And that's just one example. I have things of brethren who chose Hollywood movies, TV shows, and video games over the Word of God, over good ministry, over fellowship with the brethren. I have brethren that have chosen hell holidays. My ex-wife chose alcohol, drunkenness, 
and drugs and worldliness, Lady Gaga and worldly music and sat Satanism. What is that? Getting in bed with the world. People are choosing the world over God. They're choosing the world over fellowship with the brethren. Over having good ministry that lines up with the Word of God. And brothers of Christ, I'm, 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 part of me is angry, but a lot of me is just is sorrowful. Because I read the Bible and it's like, Lord, you said this was going to happen, but I hate it. I hate the falling away. Brothers of Christ, you hate the falling away. I hate it. What do I do? I'm going to have to keep fighting against it until God calls me home. Get back to the Bible. Get back to doing things God's way. Okay? That's what I'm trying to encourage you, brothers of Christ, and exhort you with. Get back to doing things God's way. Get back to the order of authority that God set up. Men, you need to get back to doing what God says. Jesus being your head covering, not me, myself, and I. The self-trinity. Not the world. You need to worry about pleasing God. Not, wi not wives, not children, not men pleasers down here. And that way, when you get your heart right with God, then you're able to, to rule your home well and take care of your wife and children. Wash your wife by the watering of the word. Raise your children in the admonition of the Lord. Okay. The fine linen of Egypt. Egypt's the type of the world. What's going on here? Brethren are going back to the world. I gotta say this real quick, and you wanna know what really started all of this, brothers of Christ? When they started inviting, I got to talking with the Lord for hours on this, about how these Babel buildings, instead of being separate from the world completely, they started inviting lost people into their fellowship to get them saved. The Bible says you go out and preach the gospel. Paul went out and preached the gospel, and when people got saved, he set up churches of saved sinners and only saved sinners in different areas. And you come together, save sinners only, to sing praises to the Lord. To confess your faults one to another. To get prayer requests. To sing hymns. To listen to the word of God. Because Paul talks about the First and Second Thessalonians. Let these epistles be read in all the churches. You're supposed to come together to hear the Pauline epistles being read. To, keep your, to exhort one another. To encourage one another. To be there for one another. But brothers and sisters in Christ only. What happened? They invited the lost world in. With carved works, with fine linen of Egypt, they invited the lost world in. They invited Egypt in. Come on in! What happened? They started messing up the flock. They started uh, tempting the brethren that are saved and got them more to the world than they did the people to Christ. And I always tell this, when you try to get mingled in with the world, when they try to take... God's wisdom and the world's wisdom, like Satan did, he would quote God's word half partly, not all the way, partly, and then he would throw in the world's wisdom. What happened? It all became world's wisdom. It all became junk. They either come over here or you have nothing to do with them. God's wisdom, God's way. They either come over here. You don't go over here thinking, well, I can combine the two a little bit and try to win souls to Christ. They're, you're never, you're never going to pull them over here that way. They're going to pull you this way. Hope I'm saying it where you can understand, Brother Christ. Bottom line, if you stand for God and do what's right, they either come over to you or they just take off. But what's happening is, is when you start compromising, you know, peace offerings, we can all get along to get along, and hopefully me being around them will pull them up to my level. No, it doesn't. All it does is they pull you down to their level. You're up here, they're down here, and you're trying to pull them up to, you know, getting saved, and God sanctify them, and cleaning up their life, and living a godly life. And you think, well, I can hang out with them and be a, a good example as far as it's hanging out with them. They will, you'll never pull them up to your level. They will always pull you down to their level. Always. Every time. Every time. And I believe that's what really hurt the body of Christ in these Babel buildings, inviting lost people in. I know I'm going off on a little bit of tangents, brother says Christ, please bear with me, but I was talking with the brother in Christ, and it's like, it's just, it's frustrating. The Bible says that if a man, let's say you have a man that gets drunk, and he's getting drunk, and he won't stop getting drunk, you're to put him out of your fellowship. You're to kick him out of the Babel building. 
according to the scriptures. But then you turn around and invite a lost person in that's a drunkard, and you invite him right on in. Come on in. So you can be there, but that brother in Christ that's, that's getting drunk, he has to get kicked out. Uh, you're not supposed to invite lost purple. You're not supposed to be inviting lost world into your fellowship. Period. And yes, that brother or sister in Christ that gets into wickedness and sin and won't give it up, you kick him out. You break fellowship with them. Now, if they're struggling with it and they admit it's wrong, I'm trying to stop. I failed. Please forgive me. I got it out again. I'm going to try to go again for a while and keep it out. You don't kick them out. But I'm talking about brethren that you you say, hey, what you're doing is wrong. And they're like, that's just your opinion. That's just your interpretation. Scripture says there's the, no scriptures of any private interpretation. But they do that to justify them living how they want to live. Oh, no, that's just your opinion. There's nothing wrong with this. And they won't give it up. You kick them out of your fellowship. You are. But you're not supposed to invite the lost world in that has the same problems. If we're to kick brethren out that get into sin and wickedness, fleshliness, worldliness, idolatry, doctrines of devils, why are you inviting the lost world in with doctrines of devils, lusts of the flesh, worldliness, idolatry? But that was Satan's plan all along, to mess up the brethren. Oh, come on, lie in this bed that has fine linen of Egypt. Oh, we can get along with the world. Invite them in. No, no, no. It, it destroyed the body of the, these Babel buildings. It's one of many things, but one of the biggest things that destroyed the, the body of Christ in these Babel buildings. That's why most of these Babel buildings are filled with lost people, not saved. False professions of faith. Because they take repentance out. They don't hold true to the Word of God and hold every man and woman in that building accountable to the Word of God. You either follow the Word of God or there's the door. You won't see them ever do that. The only time they kick someone out is when they start clashing on doctrine or this. But oh no, they won't kick someone out for being a wicked sinner and refu I mean, refusing to give up that wicked sin, that wickedness. Oh no, no. Verse 17, I have perfumed my bed. Smells good. <laughs> I perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloe, and cinnamon. Once again, trying to entice the Bible-believing Christian away from God's wisdom to the world's wisdom. They make it look good. They make it smell good. But if you don't know the Word of God, you can be easily deceived and suckered in, especially if you're fleshly. When most of these people that go along with the world's wisdom, all these doctrines of devils, doing things the world's way, traditions of men, rudiments of the world. You know, the Bible talks about being spoiled through philosophy, philosophy, and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloe, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our feel of love into the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the goodman is not at home. He's gone on a long journey. And this is where I'm going to hit a lot of you brothers and sisters in Christ. This is, what, this is the problem we're having. There are brethren that are stopped. They're not looking for that blessed hope anymore. Jesus said, in my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. And where I am, there ye also will be. We're supposed to be looking for that blessed hope with the life that we're living. But people are being told, Oh, Jesus isn't coming soon. I hope Jesus isn't coming back for another four or five years. There is no, they call it the eminent return, but the day of Christ is not at hand. Paul didn't say that he might redeem us from this wicked world. No, Paul, all through the Pauline epistles, there's little jabs at Paul saying, Hey, he can come back and take us home any day now. Are you ready? Are you ready? Get your heart right with God. Get your life right with God. And there's this teaching that, hey, you don't have to get your heart right with God. You don't have to get your life right with God. Just pray for the blessed hope. It'll solve all your problems. The blessed hope isn't meant to solve all your problems. The Bible says, like I said, Paul said, it might redeem us from this wicked world. The blessed hope is supposed to get us out of this wicked world. It's supposed to save us from this wicked world, these people that we're supposed to be separated from. 
We're living right in God's eyes. We're doing right in God's eyes. We're keeping sin out. We're keeping worldly nuts out. And we're being surrounded by the enemy and the world and the world's wisdom. And when we get so surrounded, God's going to say, enough's enough. He's going to call us home. He's rescuing us from that garbage. He's not supposed to be rescuing you from you making a fool of yourself and falling flat on your face, being foolish and worldly and sinful. Get your heart right with God. Get ready for Him to come back. Are you ready? Are you staying in the Word of God every day? Starting your day with the Word of God, ending the day with the Word of God. Are you staying in prayer? Are you helping your brothers and sisters in Christ out? Are you confessing your faults one to another? Are you singing hymns? Are you being? Or if you're, are you going through sanctification? Going through your life every day, saying, "Lord, is there something I'm doing wrong? Is there something I need to get out of my life? Is there something wicked in my home?" Self-judgment. Bible says, "If I judge myself, I should, uh, you, 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 should, you judge yourself." I can't think. Forgive me. I'm trying to memorize a lot of scripture, but it talks about judging yourself before God judges you. God will give you a chance to judge yourself. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be condemned with the world. That's what the Bible says. If we would judge ourselves, okay, and that conde condemnation is physically in this life. You start going the way of the world, the Bible says if you are truly saved, and this is a temple for the Holy Ghost, you're truly saved, and this is a temple for the Holy Ghost, God will destroy this temple if you profane this temple. You start getting into a lot of wickedness and sin, you start getting into worldliness, you start doing things the world's way, the chastisement of the Lord will come down, and it can get so bad that God will kill you and bring you home early. And you'll stand before God, and God won't be looking at you going, well done, thou good and faithful one. He'll be just shaking his head and he'll be so disappointed in you. Do you want God to be disappointed in you, brother Jesus Christ? I don't. There are days where if he came back, he'd be disappointed in me. There's days that he came back, he'd say, well done, thou good and faithful one. And I'm focusing, I'm working, I, I'm, I'm submitting myself to God, and I'm trying so hard, brother Jesus Christ, so that every day is that day of feeling that if he came back today, God would say, well done, thou good and faithful one. You gotta submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he must flee. You gotta submit yourself to God. Give your life to Christ, and he will take and clean up your life. But this whole thing about, you know, well, you know, God's not really coming back anytime soon. So what happens? I can start messing with harlots. Here talking about the world's wisdom. I can start getting into the world, getting into lust of the flesh, get into uh, you know, idolatry and worldliness. Oh, that's not that big of a deal. God's not coming back anytime soon. What is that? That's anybody who's against Jesus coming back, living as if Jesus Christ could come back any day. Not that he's guaranteed to come back right now, but we're to live as if he could come back today. If he came back today, are you ready? Anybody that turns against that is what the Bible's talking about, that they've turned from the faith uh, and pierce themselves through with many. Uh, no, I'm sorry. They've turned from the faith. They've departed from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. They start getting into worldliness and wickedness. And no matter how much I try to correct them, or you try to correct them, or reprove them, they won't listen. Why? Because they're no longer looking for that blessed hope. They're not looking for Jesus Christ. They take their eyes off Jesus Christ and they put it on the world. And that they're just so focused on the world and what's going on in the world and lust of the flesh and idolatry and worldliness and culture, they take their eyes off Jesus Christ. For the good man is not at home, he has gone on a long journey. Ah, he won't be back for a long time. And people are buying into this. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. The Bible says we're supposed to patiently wait for that blessed hope. We're to patiently wait for it, but we're to look for it every day. We're to pray for it. We're to live for it. Jesus comes back today, brother says, Christ, are you ready? The catching away is not meant to be a solution to all your sin you get into sin and wickedness and making a mess of your life. If, you've, if you're if you in the flesh and you're in sin and wickedness and you made a, le, a, a mess of your life, brother, says Christ, 
Turn back to God. Fall on your knees, perform. Pray. Get back into His Word and say, Lord, help me get this stuff out. Help me clean up my life. Help me fix this before you come back, Lord. I want to be in a right standing when you come back. And God will help you. The Bible says God is faithful to forgive if we confess our sins. If we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He'll get you back on your feet. He'll get you back on that right path. Remember, you took one step in the wrong direction. Now he'll get you all the way back to that path and get you back to walking with him and for him. Doing things his way. Living a life of Christ. It's not too late. Okay, he hasn't come back yet. It's not too late. Get busy living for the Lord today. Don't just sit there at, with a messed up life and just say, oh, I'll just keep praying for the, for, the, for the blessed hope. I'll keep praying for Jesus to come and catch us away. Get your life right with God. That's truly looking for that blessed hope. I've told this so many times. It's not in words. It's in deed. I have the scriptures here, but where it says looking for that blessed hope, the verse before it goes through all these, departing from all these different sins and wickedness, and it says looking for that blessed hope. So what does it mean to look for it? You're cleaning up your life. You're getting your heart right with God, and you're getting your life right with God. That's what it means to look for that blessed hope. And you've got brethren that don't look for that blessed hope with the life that they're living. For the good man is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He hath taken bags, a bag of money with him, and he will come home on the day appointed. Day appointed. And they act like they know what that day is. Stay away from uh, date setters, brothers says Christ. Stay away from date setters. If they're not saying Jesus could come back today, are you ready? They're a date setter. Oh, he'll come back in a year. He'll come back October. He'll come back next year. Oh, Jesus isn't coming back for five years. I don't think Jesus is coming back. Those are date setters. Stay away from them. Try to correct them. Maybe they just slipped up. Maybe they slipped up. Maybe they slipped up. Correct them. Uh, we're not supposed to be setting dates. We're supposed to be living every day as if Jesus Christ could come back today. Are you ready? That's what you're supposed to be pushing, brethren in ministry. That's what you're supposed to be pushing. But that's not popular today. Popular is take your eyes off Jesus Christ, take your eyes off the blessed hope, and put it on the world. That's what's popular today. There's ministries that they've become talk shows. They're no longer preaching the word. Preach the word, be instant in season, and out season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, the word of God. They're no longer doing solid Bible studies anymore. It's more of a talk show of what's going on in the world. He will come at the day appointed. But this is Christ. God, he'll come when he says sees fit. He'll call us home in life, the catching away, when he sees fit. He'll call us home in death when he sees fit. That our time, each individual person's time, is appointed. That, that appointment can be shortened. We talked about that, your temple. The Bible says God will destroy that temple that you are. If you profane the temple enough, God will say enough's enough, and he'll destroy the temple. Okay. But God's got everything under control, brothers and Christ. Don't get distracted by the world, and don't follow men that get distracted by the world. Follow men who keep their eyes on Jesus Christ. That stick with the word of God. Okay. Verse 21. He's telling this man, you know, you don't have to stick with God's wisdom. He's not coming back for a while. You can, you can, you can have a little bit of fun. You can stray a little bit. Come on over to the world's wisdom, the world's way. Verse 21, with her much fair speech, there it is, by good words and fair speeches, deceiving the hearts of the simple. This guy said he was without understanding. He's simple. He didn't make it his business to know the words of God, the commands of God, to make it his business to know God's wisdom. He's, he's a simpleton. It says he's without understanding. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield, to yield, submit to her, to the world. With, with the flattering of her lips, she forced him. A lot of times today, Lord, I, I talk to the Lord all the time. I say, Lord, a lot of times today, when you see the things out there, the, the illusion of freedom, the illusion of choice, when it's not, that's not really a choice. They're forcing you to do what they want you to do. That's the way the world is. The world's wisdom is. They give you the illusion that oh, you, it's just a choice. You can try it if you want, but they're really forcing it on you. 
With her flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. I remember an old picture, I can't remember exact words, but I hope I get it right, but there's a, it's a, there's a big building and it's labeled slaughterhouse. And there's a huge line of cows. And two cows are fighting over each other because what, you cut in front of me. How dare you cut? Don't you dare cut in front of me. They're both heading to the slaughterhouse. How about you get saved, born again, turn around and go the other direction. Turn from the world and follow God. And turn to God and follow Jesus Christ. But they're arguing over, oh, who's going to get to that building first? He goeth after a straightway as the ox goeth after the slaughter. And that's what it feels like, brothers and sisters, with the world. They're in a hurry to get to hell. They're in a hurry to get to the lake of fire. They're in a hurry. Brethren, when I deal with brethren, they're in a hurry to mess their lives up. They're in a hurry to, to get to turn from God and rush to the world, the falling away. They're heading for destruction. Brother, true love for each other is when you see someone heading for destruction, you warn them. You warn them. Get your eyes back on Jesus Christ. Get back to living for Him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasten to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. When the person dies and winds up in hell, it's too late. And some people, they will not, their, their heart is hardened, their heart is seared with the hard iron, their heart is hardened. And I'm not talking about saved people, I'm talking about lost people, and you can't lose your salvation. If you're saved, you're going to heaven. But it talks about how saved people can have hardened hearts and um, their conscience seared with the hot iron. But I'm talking about the lost world. They wake up in hell, and some of them are so hard-hearted that by the time they wake up in hell, they don't really, it doesn't really dawn on them, doesn't really set in until they're actually in hell. Remember the rich man, Lazarus? It didn't really hit him until he was in hell. And then he's like, oh, now it's serious. They need to get serious about it today while they still can. The Bible says, now is the time accepted. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Hope I got that right. But now is the time to get saved. Today is the time to get saved. You, get, you die in your sins without Jesus Christ. Without his blood washing your sins away, you're going to be in hell. And then it's too late. Brothers and sisters in Christ, for the brethren, for exhortation, you die, or we have the catching away that happens, and you stand before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ. It's time to throw all your works, good and bad, your deeds, where they be sinful and wicked, or true to the word of God. We're going to throw it all on this, um, on this fire, this altar, this fire. And you're like, oh, Lord, I need to go back. I need to go back, and I need to get some more stuff done for you. It's too late. It's too late. You stand before Jesus Christ. It's too late. You're now going to have to answer for your life as a Christian. Brother says, Christ, if you're still alive, it's not too late. Jesus hasn't called us home yet, which could happen any day now. It's not too late. Get your heart right with the Lord. Get to living for the Lord. Get to pleasing Him. Doing things His way. Okay? Don't get ensnared by the wisdom of this world. Don't, don't be part of the falling away. I can't stop the falling away from happening, but I'm trying to rescue as many brethren as I can from the falling away. I hate the falling away. I hope you do too, Brother Christ, because if you hate it, you're going to work so hard not to be part of it. Verse 24. Hearken unto me now, therefore, all ye children, and attend to my words of my mouth. Getting back to the words of God, the, the real wisdom. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded brethren. I believe brethren. That's a day. Many strong men have been slain by her, the lost world. You've got brethren that are wounded. 
And you've got Lost World that had been slain by her. People dying and going to hell. Because they choose the world's wisdom over God's wisdom. They choose the world's way over God's way. They love the gospels of the world, and they reject the gospel of God. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. Repentance is godly sorrow again for your personal sins. You regret ever sinning against God. You wish you never sinned against God. You hate sin. It's sending you to hell. You don't want to go to hell. You fear hell. You fear the man that can send you to hell, Jesus Christ. God the Father manifest in the flesh. You fear God. You don't want to go to hell. You hate the sin. You wish you'd never sinned against God. You come to Him sorrowful with your condition. Then you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hear true faith. Not up here the head knowledge. Oh, I have the knowledge of the death, burial, and resurrection. But you believe. You confess both in prayer to God, showing that you're not ashamed, and you don't regret what you did. And then you ask God to save you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible is very clear on how to get saved today, but people don't want to get saved the Bible way. Because it means being set apart after salvation, being set apart from this wicked world. And they don't want to be set apart from this wicked world. It means giving up sin after salvation. It means sanctification after salvation. It means doing things God's way. It means God's in charge. But I don't want to give up my authority. I love being in charge. So the world offers all these false gospels where you're in, they're in charge. They dictate what goes. They dictate what's right and what's wrong. It's not God. They've slayed many men and they've gone to hell. They've wounded a lot of brethren. A lot of brethren have gotten messed up with the world. But this is Christ. It's not too late. I'm going to keep pushing that. It's not too late. You're still breathing. You can get your heart right with God. Fall on your knees. Repent. Repentance starts before you get saved at salvation. And after God saves you, it continues in your life until God calls us home. If God hasn't called us home, you can still repent. You can still get your heart right with God. Make sure it lines up with His Word. Get it right with God. Get back to trying to please God. It's not too late. But there's coming a day. The appointed time we read here. That blessed hope. Or God calls you home in death. There's going to come a day where you're going to be called up. And you're going to be standing before Jesus Christ. And when that day happens, it's too late. Now you're going to have to answer for the life that you've lived down here. Was it a godly life? Or was it a worldly life? For she hath cast down many wounded brethren. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her, the lost world. Verse 27. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chamber of death. Chamber of death. The world's way leads to hell. Now, brother says Christ, when I said wounded there, because God will kill you, it says. But your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost, and if you profane that temple, God will destroy that temple. Which temple ye are. You see the wounded there? When people, I believe brethren that get wounded by the world, get into the worldliness, and they get wounded, and they get so defiling that temple, God will kill them and bring them home. But, but that last verse there, 27, her house is the way to hell. The world's way is leading a lot of people to hell, the ones that, it, that the world kills. Now as it said, she, that yea, many strong men have been slain by her, the world's wisdom. People who reject Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, they reject the true plan of salvation. They go to the world, they die in their sins. Where do they go? They go to hell. Brothers, says Christ, some of you, have cut, some of you need to remember that the way we live our life, brothers and sisters Christ, is to be a light to this wicked world, to get them away from her. Get them away from Satan. Get them away from the world's wisdom and turn them to God's wisdom. We're supposed to be a light in this dark world with the life that we're living. We're separate from the world. And people from the world look over at us and go, Wait a second. I'm living in fear. I'm miserable. I can get flesh high. I can feed my flesh and get have fun. Fun is flesh. Flesh is fun. And get flesh highs. But once the flesh high is gone, I'm miserable. 
I'm naked, I'm poor, I'm blind. Throw a whole list that the Bible talks about. And they look over and they see us and they go, what does they have that we don't? Because they're not living in fear. They're not poor. They're not wretched. They're not blind. They're not miserable. They're, they're going through hard times and they're, they're smiling and praising their, their God. What do they have? I want what they have. We're supposed to be separate from the world, brother and sister Christ. Today, Satan has made the Babel buildings look like Catholicism and look like the world. And everything is about getting them back to looking like the world so then people won't get saved. We're not to look like the world and act like the world and do things the world's way. Traditions of men aren't supposed to refute, uh, uh, supersede the commandments of God. He got on the, Jesus got on the Pharisees. You've made the commandments of, uh, of God of none effect by your traditions. And that's what the whole point is, is to get so-called Christianity to look like the world. Because if you get to look like the world, people won't be like, oh, they look like us, talk like us, they're fearful like us. They're, they don't have anything I don't have. But God said we're supposed to be separate. And the lost world is supposed to be looking at us going, I want what they have. They've got peace. They've got joy, real peace, not fake peace, real peace. They got joy, not uh, flesh high, getting the flesh high. And every time the flesh high stops, like drugs, you come down hard and you're miserable and you got to get that flesh high again. All this worldliness and fleshliness, they have joy no matter what. They've got something I want. Today, those, those Christians, I'm pointing over here, these Christians... We're not looking like those Christians that much these days, brothers and sisters of Christ. And I'm calling all of us out. Me too. We need to look like that Christian. We need to be a real Christian according to the scriptures. We need to be set apart from this world. We need to get away from the world's wisdom. The Bible says, love not the world, neither things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's supposed to be what the way the lost world is. We're not to love the world and the things in the world more than we love God. Things down here aren't more important than things up there. Things down here are not more important than this. And pleasing God. Uh, we're not supposed to be a friend of the world. Be adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever shall be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. We're not supposed to be man pleasers, compromisers, trying to, you know, peace offerings we read in there. We're not supposed to be like that. We're supposed to be set apart. I want nothing to do with that world and wickedness. I'm going to sit here. If you want what I've got, let me tell you about my Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about sin and wickedness. Let me tell you about hell and the lake of fire. Let me show you about my Savior who can save you from all that. Let me tell you about him. But we don't go and conform to the world. I see. Uh, that's the next one. Be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You can't do that if you're conforming to the world. You can't be that person that sets apart, that's a, uh, an ambassador for Jesus Christ, but the Bible says that part of being in Christ, he's made unto us righteousness. Jesus' righteousness is imputed to us, but we're now ambassadors for Jesus Christ. If you conform to the world, people can't see you as an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, being separate, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God by the life you're living along with your words. They both need to line up, and you need them both. Now, Brothers and Sisters Christ, this has been long, so I'm going to kind of end it here, but try it. after this study, if you still have some time, or make mark it down, chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 8 is a good one. Proverbs 8, that starts going through the wisdom of the Lord and how great the wisdom of the Lord is. And how the wisdom of the world of the Lord is what's going to save man. Paul said, receive the engrafted word that's able to save your soul. It's God's wisdom that saves. And God says, obey the gospel. Here's the wisdom. Here's the real gospel. Here's the true plan of salvation. Are you going to follow it? The lost world doesn't want to. We chose to follow it. We need to continue following it after salvation. We chose to give our lives, in other words, we chose to give our lives to Jesus Christ at the cross, at salvation. We need to continue giving our lives to Jesus Christ until the day we die or until he calls us home in death. But some of us are trying to take our lives back, resurrect the old man, and, and go play around with the world a little bit. 
And it's not just a little bit. We, in our head, I'll just do it a little bit. One step that leads to another step, then another step. And that little bit becomes a lot. So Brothers of Christ, chapter 8, chapter 9. Take some time to read it about God's wisdom, the right wisdom. Okay. So Brothers and Sisters of Christ, there's, when we try to push, and I'm pushing this, and some of the other brethren push it too, that there's God's wisdom and there's the world's wisdom. And we need to get back to God's wisdom. And we need to stay away from the world's wisdom. It's going to wound you, and it's, and it's damning a lot of people to hell. There are a lot of people are going to hell because they're going after the world. And not after Christ. Okay. I love my brother and sister Christ. Let this encourage you. Get back to living for the Lord. If you get all, how dare he talk to me, and you get all puffed up, because your, heart is, is, your conscience is seared with a hot iron, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be praying for you. That God will chip away, you know, that God will heal that heart. He can. It's not too late. If you've got a heart that's conscience that's seared with a hot iron, God can heal it. If you turn to him, he'll heal your heart. He'll heal those burns. Uh, if your heart is hardened, he'll chip away the rocks, the heart, the rocks that have formed around your heart, hardening, hardening it. He'll chip them away. It's not too late. Turn back to God. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Get back in the Word of God. Get back into prayer. Thank you for praying for me, Brother and Sister Christ. I'm praying for you. Let's get back to looking for that blessed hope and being there for one another, and doing things God's way. I'll see you in the next study. Thank you for watching.